Okay. This section here, I want to give you an example, is a test for matched paired. So it's called a matched, get my pen to work here. Match pair T test. And you use this with means. So, in this situation here, you have, uh, what, 10 guys here or so, um, and you have their pulse rate before and after spending 20 minutes of an exercise activity. So they exercise for 20 minutes, and you want to compare the resting pulse rates both before and after to get an idea if exercise is going to reduce the resting pulse rate. So you have your sets of data here. On a calculator, you could put the before in L1 and the after in L2. And then in L3, you'd have another set where you subtract these two. Now, you'd like to think as your after as being lower than your before. Because it should, your pulse rate should go down. So you got, do you want to do before minus after or after minus before? Now how it's set up here, if you look down below, is they want UD, what's called U diff, okay, the average difference, to be less than zero. So we're, we're thinking it's negative. So what we want to do is subtract after minus before. So this one here would be a zero. This next one would be a negative four. The next one would be a negative four, so forth and so on. If you add all those up and take the average, what you find out here is that the average difference of these two, down the bottom, is negative 2.8. So in other words, negative 2.8 uh, beats per minute slower than it was before you exercise. So you think, therefore, if it's two point, negative 2.8, that the hypothesis would be originally that it's no different, okay? UD, U diff, is equal to zero for the null, and the alternative hypothesis down here would be that it's negative, okay? Because we're interested in having a decrease. So what you have to do for your conditions and assumptions is that the, these L3 numbers, the difference numbers, <coughs> should be somewhat normally distributed like it is down here because you could graph those numbers. Okay, you should have at least uh, a certain amount of numbers, or 30 if you would. In this case, there's only 10. But since they're normally distributed, we can then say we're okay with a number less than 30. Um, there should be less than 10% of your overall group. But in this case, it's an experiment, so that kind of gets thrown out the window. And then uh, we want them to be independent from one to the other. Another, other. In other words, Alan is the same person before and after. Brandon's the same person before and after. But Alan and Brandon are independent from each other. So really, all we end up doing is a t-test on column L3, just like we did earlier in section 9-2. So here's what we do down here with the work. T would be negative 2.8 minus 0 divided by the standard deviation. The standard deviation of the L3, which you get off your calculator if you put it in a one of our stat, is 2.53. Divided by the square root of 10, because there's 10 people on our sample, gives you a T-score of negative 3.5 right there. It's kind of small. What is the probability, then, of us being negative 2.8 or a t-score of negative 3.5, if the average should be zero, the difference we would expect as a null would be zero, what would the probability be? Well, we'd use TCDF. We'd go from negative infinity up to negative 3.5, and then we have to use nine degrees of freedom. Sample size is 10, degrees of freedom would be nine, and then the technology pops out with 0 .0034. That's pretty much zero. So at any alpha level, either 5 or 1%, that number is below that. So since this number is below alpha, we would reject the null and state that there is strong evidence indicating that your pulse is significantly lower after exercise than it was before. So in this situation, we would fail. We would reject the null because the probability of this happening at negative 2.8, even though that number does not seem a lot different, 
You say, well, that's not very impressive. 2.8 beats different. Uh, it is significant based upon the sample size of 10. In fact, there's only a 0.003% chance, I mean, a 0.3% chance of that occurring, yet it did occur, and that's why we reject it and say exercising does lower your pulse rate after, after exercising. It does drop significantly. 2.8 beats per minute lower is significant. Now, we can back this up with the confidence interval. So the book always likes to do these on the AP exam, like doing them as well. We have a very low p-value, so we reject the null. There's strong evidence that from this form of exercise, you can reduce pulse rates. We backed it up with the confidence interval we did in earlier chapters, not chapter 23, that's from a different book. But you take your point estimate, which in this case would be UDIF, or D-bar they call it here, okay, they call it D-bar, I call it UDIF. That's your point estimate, P-E, plus or minus your margin of error. So in this case, your margin of error is going to be your T-score using 9 degrees of freedom times the standard deviation, of, um, standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So what that works out to be up here is 2 point, negative 2.8 plus or minus the T value using 9 degrees of freedom, okay, 95% confidence level would be 2.262. Then we have the standard deviation of 2.53 divided by the square root of 10. That gives us this confidence interval from negative 4.61 to negative 0.99. So we are 95% confident that six weeks of this exercise program can produce a mean decrease in resting pulse rate between 1 and 4.6 beats per second. Notice zero, if there, was no, if there was no difference, is not in that interval, and that's why I reject. If the null is not in the interval, then you would reject the null and take the alternative hypothesis, which in this case is that it is lower based upon having your exercise. So this is combining both the hypothesis test here on the top one, okay, where we get a very low p-value. So we reject, and you basically get the same information by doing a uh, confidence interval because zero does not show up in that interval. Therefore, we know we should reject the null as well. So I want you to do a similar exercise like this on the one I gave you about the manufacturers of Bronco Cola having an orange can and a blue can if there's a difference of choice between one or the other in terms of their satisfaction. That is attached to the homework, and just do that and upload it. And then we'll talk about some other things here this week as well in terms of two different populations, but they're not paired. For example, let's say if we want to look at the... Um, how much money a girl has in the girls' division versus how much money a boy has in the boys' division in their pocket. Is it a significant difference between boys and girls or how many demerits each group got? You can't pair them. They're separate groups, boys and girls. This here is paired information we're doing here because we're talking about the pulse rate of the same people. Paired are very common because you're looking like post-test, pre-test of same people, before and after type results that are very important, but you just treat them as a one-sample t-test based upon the third column, which would be the difference of these two. Be very careful. you got to realize, do you want it to be a one-tail, two-tail, is it upper or lower? In this case, we want the difference to go down, so we want the alternative to be less than zero to kind of prove your point that exercise lowers your pulse rate. Okay, hope this helps. Go ahead and do the exercise that's attached to this lesson.